two households, both alike. Ah! Welcome to Browse Held High. We're going to be covering a wide range of movies in Shakespeare Month, so let's start with something, uh, accessible. Something wild, something fun, something light, something kind of stupid. Ah, so they put the trailer for the movie in the actual movie. How thoughtful of them. One of Shakespeare's most popular plays has always been Romeo and Juliet. And arguably more than any other play, it has been quoted by... Everyone. Picture me about honey Above a voice sings low Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Everyone. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Not if you called them stench blossoms. Or crap weed. Everyone. Seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. The story of two lovers caught between their feuding families is globally ubiquitous. It is the most frequently taught text in American high schools. Verona, Italy has a tourism trade based on visiting sites from the work. Even the name Romeo has become shorthand for a man in love. Naturally, the play has been adapted into paintings and ballets and operas and, of course, films. One of the most popular being... Yeah! This one. Baz Luhrmann, you scamp. So, Baz Luhrmann, the boy from Baz, the Bazmanian devil. The Australian director has only made five films in his career, but damn if he hasn't done so with Panache. After mild success with his first outing, he achieved his mainstream breakthrough with his utterly wonky bonkers adaptation, Romeo plus Juliet. When adapting Shakespeare, the inevitable decision every director has to make is, how much of the text do I use? Use every line, the movie ends up four hours long. Hi, Kenneth Branagh. So in order to make a serviceable movie, cuts have to be made. We'll see varying degrees of textual fidelity over the course of the month, but here, for this movie, it's notable for how faithful, almost fundamentalist it is about the text itself. Even though it plays liberally with action, they make cuts here and there, but the words included are not to be touched. There's my gold. My green, papery gold. The worst example of this, Elizabethan England had guns, like they knew what guns were, they had primitive firearms back then, Shakespeare knew what a gun was, he used the word gun in his plays in its modern context, and it's not entirely unreasonable to imagine a Shakespearean character wielding an early firearm. And yet... PUT UP YOUR SWORDS! They label the guns swords so they don't have to say guns. Give me my long sword, home. Stupidest goddamn thing. I hated this movie for years purely on the basis of that one stupid decision. Yeah, just give me a minute to place my wax seal on this letter so my courtier can send it. Done. That said, the language is intact. And the lovely poetry is, after all, one of the main reasons this play remains so beloved. The reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Such a shame no one can actually say it. It's such a letdown. Almost every young actor delivers their lines as if they've been asked to learn ancient Sumerian phonetically. My only love sprung from my only hate. Words, 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 words. Which has always baffled me. They are speaking English. Aside from a few antique words and poetic rewordings, it is the same language I am speaking now. But old English is hard, whined the straw man commenter. All right, so we're all on the same page. Old English sounds like this. Fit, we garden on here, dogum. Theoringa thrumga fronon. Middle English sounds like this. One that April with his shorter sorta, the drought of March hath passed to the rota. And English, the language that I am speaking now, 
sounds like this. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. The film's greatest failing is its two leads. Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes are such dull actors given lush words. There is a technique and a cadence to it, but a good rule of thumb is to know what the hell you're saying. And they just don't know what they're saying! How sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. Saying things that are good because they are old. Sure, there are those who can say the lines. Miriam Margoyles can say them. Paul Sorvino can say them. Harold Perrineau can really say them. Even Paul Rudd can say them. Pete Postlethwaite can sing them. John Leguizamo... Peace. Peace. I hate the word. I'm a ground schloth. And the rest just sound like they're reciting contextless punchlines. The only time they seem to know when to match the emotion to the word and the word to the emotion is when they're screaming them. I have fucked and fought! So long to speak, I long to die! I defy you, star! Oh, And honestly, it kind of fits. At least with the tone they're going for. Hell, this movie made Queen Mab into a Quaalude. Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again, and morphine well. It's awesome. The drugs are quick. <laughs> and so the dialogue is drowned out by the everything else. Lerman is mildly insane. Zoons, is that shtick I do a spy? But as frenetic as he can be, he's also an incredibly talented panderer. He knows his audience well. Teenagers. And what do teenagers want? Validation. To feel like they're the smartest kids in the room. Plus, they're probably studying Romeo and Juliet in ninth grade English, so they probably rather watch a movie than read a book. Yes, you're learning Shakespeare, you smart, smart kids, you. Hey, kids, did you know that Romeo and Juliet is about love? The man is not subtle. Orson Welles once said that we sit through Shakespeare just to recognize the quotations. This movie feels the same way. It's a Sparknotes-friendly edition. Blah, 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 boring stuff, boring stuff, important quote, blah, 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 blah. A plague on both your houses! This is an important quotation, be sure to use it in your essays! And honestly, fine. It's not a terrible retelling of the story. Well, it hits the beats. Well, you can understand the words. Actually, this makes no sense whatsoever. The story works thanks to its roots in the politics of the day. People swore fealty to houses and were willing and able to fight for them thanks to a lax constabulary, which would be an easy setting for noble houses to allow ancient grudges to break to new mutiny. But here, where the Montagues and Capulets are construction magnates or something, where their private parties are advertised on local news and potential suitors have their faces on Time magazine, and their petty squabbles produce this? Hey, remember that time that Donald Trump's chauffeurs got into a knife fight with Warren Buffett's secretaries? <sighs> Man, those Trump boys sure could bite a thumb. The story doesn't quite work in a modern setting unless it's outside of the law. West Side Story got that. Sheesh, even Tromeo and Juliet got that. The setting feels more trendy than sensible, pandering to the tastes of the day. Twentieth century director Harley Granville Barker famously marked RJ with the elegant descriptor, A Tragedy of Youth as Youth Sees It. The original story, Arthur Brooks' The Tragical History of Romeus and Juliet, was a cautionary tale, warning of the perils of young, foolish, unchecked lust and disobeying your parents. The lovers in Shakespeare's adaptation are also foolish, but he asks us to see the world as they saw it. Shakespeare writes to place us in the minds of those young lovers. Minds where love is deep and seeming eternal, 
where ancient conflicts seem petty and absurd, where authority figures are, at worst, oppressors, and at best, incompetent. No wonder it's taught to high school kids. As for this movie, in 1996, this was youth as youth saw itself. Romeo plus Juliet was born in a time when demographic focusing was intense in Hollywood movies. It catered to 90s teenagers and the world as they saw it. A world informed by MTV and Nickelodeon and American surfer parlance. Romeo! Lerman is doing his damnedest to convince the kids of the day that the story is still relevant. Hey, kid from the 90s. I know it must be tough, hiding from your parents, listening to Radiohead and resetting your own poetry. But you know who else hid from his parents and listened to Radiohead and recited his own poetry? Romeo. That's who. I'm sure this felt necessary at the time, filtering through the trends of the mid-90s. And so we have a Romeo and Juliet where the Capulets vs. Montagues become El Mariachi vs. the Burger King Kids Club. All that said, there are many touches to admire in this film. The cinematography, for one. Like, I love this shot. Like, this is the movie in a nutshell. Neon on candlelight. Early modern through kitsch. And let's face it, Lerman knows how to stage a scene. Alright, I'm ending that. Lerman knows how to stage a scene unexpectedly. He knows the story's been done countless times and knows people's expectations. Everyone knows that Romeo and Juliet speak to each other separated by a balcony. So, he brings them together replacing their chaste distance with erotic proximity. And toss them into a pool. Okay, fine. Well, actually, there's a lot of water imagery. Fitting, too. It is an erotic element. Sex is, after all, fluid exchange. Or, less dirtily, perhaps it's just a visual expansion of Juliet's promise that her bounty is as boundless as the sea, her love as deep, the more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. And this scene... I simply think is genuinely brilliant. Seeing each other through water, each refracted in the other's eyes, made larger and deeper and more beautiful by their young eyes. It's a perfect visual metaphor for the depth and naivete of first love. And it's such a shame we had to get through all this nonsense first. It is a deeply flawed movie, though a deftly made flawed movie. Maybe more clever than smart, but serviceable to its audience. But that audience of people who were teenagers in the 90s will only dwindle with time. So, I wonder how well this will age. Even almost 20 years on, the dust appears to be showing. Still, I won't say it isn't fun. At least. After all, for never was there a story of more WHOA than this of Juliet and her Romeo. I am so much better than that final line. Jesus Christ. Spring break, spring break, spring break forevermore.